morning and uh, happy Friday got two videos to do today didn't get around to doing one yesterday again but don't do it early in the morning the day gets out in front of me and gets busy and then next thing you know it's, it's late afternoon evening and, and the chances of me doing a recording then are pretty remote I just uh, too preoccupied with other things even though it's just a little five minute shout out Let's do yesterday's gospel, which was the rich man and Lazarus. Could it bring to mind sins of omission? What are we exactly held accountable for when we are guilty of sins of omission? We're held accountable when we could have done something and deliberately chose not to. The rich man is not condemned because he's rich at all. He is condemned because he's indifferent to the plight of Lazarus. That's what sends him to the place of torment. And Abraham references his, uh, you, were, you had good things in your life, Lazarus had poor things. And now your situation is reversed. But again, he's not condemned because he's wealthy. He's condemned because he's indifferent which is one of the traps of wealth is that it can make you indifferent to the plight of others you forget that your good fortune or your success really is a gift from God and instead you think it is your own your own creation or your own your own right let's turn that down just a little bit so I raised the question yesterday at mass ought I not do something when I see the guy with the will work for food sign I don't want to give him money, but I ought to give him something. A bag of food, a Lunchable, a bottle of water, and maybe have something readily available in the car um, to give them in case I come across somebody. And I think that's one approach. And then you can test out the, uh, are they being honest or are they uh, panhandling, which is of course our big fear is that they're just looking for money to raise, none of which they intend to spend on food for the most part. You know, or gift cards. You give them a gift card to some place that you know is in walking distance, up the road. That is, that is very possible. It makes a good, uh, a good alternative. But other sins of omission, probably the biggest one for most of us, is giving our time to others when they're seeking it. Whether it's a spouse, a parent, a child, a friend, because we've all become much more guarded about our time and the time that we're willing to give others. And we want to be generous with our time to uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, the rich man gave Lazarus no time at all. Stepped over him and kept on going. The picture's painted even that uh, he would have been happy with the scraps had he just been given that. The only, the only ones who cared for Lazarus were the dogs that licked his sores. The rich man became blind to him. And uh, we do not want to become blind to our brothers and sisters. We don't want to become deaf. We don't want to become indifferent. So there might be that person in your life who you're not particularly excited to have to talk to on the phone or encounter in person. But that might be my Lazarus or your Lazarus. And we want to respond patiently, lovingly, generously to our Lazarus. And they're out there and they're the test case. We're not going to be held accountable for people in, you know, Ethiopia how we responded to them or not. It's going to be the people at our doorstep, people on our threshold, people that more than likely we interact with every day. Because the Lord condemns two actions against our neighbor, evil acts 
an indifferent X. And of course, that's an oxymoron, right? An indifferent action is no action at all. It's indifference. It's ignoring. It's avoiding. It's closing our eyes and hardening our hearts to um, to those individuals. So, awaken your hearts and open your eyes and love your neighbor.